The Nike Pegasus 35 Turbo was released on July 19th and sold out within one hour. It was designed for world-class runners with the best materials Nike has to offer. The Breaking 2 project back in 2017 was the introduction of the Zoom X phone and the Vaporfly 4%. When they announced that the Pegasus would feature the midsole that has helped many runners, including myself, set personal records, I saved up my money and got lucky and got a pair even though I'm not a world-class runner. Marathon season in the Dallas Metroplex begins in September and it goes all the way to April. I am planning to run between five and seven half marathons so I can get in shape to run a full marathon in 2019. I said I would not run one, but what the heck, right? Will I be alive in 2019? Will the Pegasus 35 Turbo help me earn some medals, set personal records, and become my main racing shoes? Let's break them down first. The upper has a dual layer design. The outer layer is translucent while the inner layer is the mesh found in most Nike shoes, but a little bit thinner for breathability purposes, I imagine. It feels extremely flexible, breathable, but not durable, perhaps because the main objective of these shoes is running. The non-reflective inner swoosh is glued on, while the outer swoosh is painted on. The tongue is similar to the Pegasus 35 non-turbo, with decent padding. The non-reflective racing stripe is glued on nicely, and it actually holds the inner and outer mesh together. My finger cannot go across the racing stripe because, like I said, it's glued on together. I will show you the details of the tongue a little bit later. The collar is nicely padded and the heel collar is nicely padded as well. It is designed this way to prevent blisters during long runs and speed runs when the most rubbing and irritation occurs. The heel plate feels identical to the Nike Pegasus 35 non-turbo. I reviewed those shoes and had no issues at all. This heel also has a reflective strip and the stitching on top is actually reflective as well. The outsole has a pentagon shaped grid. The heel and the forefoot have durable rubber material while the middle is Zoom X foam, but thanks to this outer rubber lining, the midsole will have some sort of protection. The midsole is what makes the Pegasus 35 Turbo. The Zoom X foam was featured in 2017 in the Vaporfly 4% in the Breaking 2 project. Nike claims that it has the highest energy return out of any shoe they've ever made. It was designed for speed to help you run faster, longer, and comfortable as well. Thanks to its low density, flexibility, lightweight, and impact resistance, it helps you push a little bit harder and minimizes soreness afterwards. The Pegasus 35 Turbo does not feature a carbon fiber plate like the Vaporfly 4%, but this allows the shoe to have more flexibility. Does it need it? We shall see. One more thing I forgot to mention without the carbon fiber plate in the, in the midsole, the Pegasus 35 maintained their decent height. The Vaporfly 4% were a little bit tall in my opinion, even though the best, they have been the best running shoes I've ever had. Look, I'm sorry I keep mentioning them. I'll stop now. Look, the Pegasus 35 Turbo, they're a beautiful shoe. They look great. They look aerodynamic. They look fast with the beveled heel, with the race collar, the racing stripe down the middle. Will the looks match the performance? Well, for this ultimate performance test, I will run a 5K as, as fast as I can. I'll also run a 100 meter sprint, log in dozens of miles, take them to work around the house, also drive a lot with them, and other fun stuff. Because I'm not gonna go out there for two hours and come back and tell you how they felt. That's not enough. And that's not what I do. It will be about two weeks of nonstop workouts, trying them on on every surface possible because we all live in different cities with different surfaces, different trails, sidewalks. Everything is different. Um, also, I know these shoes are just meant for running, but if you've seen my videos, I do a little bit more. I will also test them out for breathability, impact, traction, durability, comfort while wearing various socks. Look, I'm not an actor or a poser that wears these without socks. I'm really going to test these out. I'm just a regular guy with a full-time job, just trying to be in shape or get healthy. I can only share my personal experience and perhaps my video will give you an idea what they can do as, look, I am not skinny and I have sort of a white foot and a very low arch. So if they perform well for me, I am sure better shape 
men and women will accomplish more than I can. Look, I know I said I would run a 5K for this ultimate performance test. I feel like it's not enough though. It feels like I should run longer and do my hardest, but it's mid-July in Dallas. It's been like 110 degrees outside. I have a regular job, so I can only do it at certain times, only in the afternoon, pretty much in the afternoons. I will have to wait for the weekend. How much longer? I don't know. We shall see. But if my time suck, you have every right to make fun of me. I don't do well in the summer at all. Like I said in the winter, no excuses. Half marathon training has officially started right now with these shoes. It's not too late to go out there right now. Look, I'm wearing the Pegasus 35 right now that I reviewed on my last video. How much better are the Turbo gonna be? Is the Zoom X really gonna make that big of a difference? There's only one way to find out. I am not gonna break personal records and earn all these medals that I'm planning to get this season. So I got my backpack ready. The shoes are ready. I haven't really tried them on except inside. I haven't even stepped outside. As you can tell, they're pretty clean. The Pegasus 35 Turbo are meant for flight. So let's fly.
That was the ultimate performance test for the Nike Pegasus 35 Turbo. I hope you enjoyed the montage as much as I did making it. Let's make this quick because this video has been too long already. The 5K test run for the Nike Pegasus 35 Turbo was excellent. I did not break a personal record, but that's okay. It was 103 degrees out there. It was brutal. I had a lot of fun though. The shoes performed really, really, really well. Mile after mile, I had no issues whatsoever. Uh, 5K was not enough for these shoes, so I had to run a longer run. How much longer? Well, if you go to my Instagram, you can find out the results of the another test run I made for these shoes. I am really happy that I got the chance to buy these before they sold out. I really did have a lot of fun making this video and I worked my butt off. Let's start off with the upper. The upper was excellent. It performed really well. It was breathable, flexible, and durable, even though I put it through all that punishment. Uh, the fly wire was flawless as always and along with the heel plate it helped my foot stay secure in this shoe at all times. The shoelaces never came undone and every sock I tried these on with my socks never rode down. I never once got a blister. I have no complaints about the upper. Here's a closer look of the Zoomex foam. This midsole was magnificent. It was responsive. It was springy. It was soft. It was cushioned. It was incredible. All the running I did, all the jumping, all the interval training, man, I never felt any pain, any discomfort on my feet, no cramps, no fatigue. You know, after long days at work or after a long workout, you just want to swap shoes. But no, I kept these before the workouts, after the workouts, during long days at work. They just felt magnificent. It's very, very soft. The Nike Pegasus 35 Turbo are very lightweight. And it's big thanks to the Zoomex foam. Look at it. Very durable after all those football drills I did on the dirt, on the concrete, on the grass. Excellent. Well, now that we're here, we might as well take a look at the outsole. The outsole was flawless. It performed really well on every surface. And thanks to that outer layer, see that rubber? That's what kept the outsole and the midsole, the Zoomex foam, intact. I know the Pegasus 35 Turbo were only meant for running, and all that stuff I did might seem useless, but that's what I do, that's how I train, and I hope I provided some information or useful information for you in case you were wondering about how these shoes perform on different surfaces. I mean, I'm not skinny, but you, you see my shape, you see the way I run, and I hope it helps you out in any way. That about wraps it up for the Nike Pegasus 35 Turbo. If you have any more questions or concerns about these shoes, just contact me on my Instagram or put a comment down below. I had a lot of fun making this video. I worked really hard. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, are these going to be my main racing shoes? I don't know. I haven't worn the Nike Vaporfly 4% in about four months, but these are going to be one of my main training shoes for my upcoming half marathons, 10Ks, and everything I'm going to do. So I'm going to rack up the medals in the meantime. I'm going to get to work. So, okay, the next video is going to be a comparison video between the Nike Pegasus 35 Turbo and the ones that started them all, the Vaporfly 4%. It's going to be an ultimate comparison video. But for now, Nike Pegasus 35 Turbo were meant to fly, and I felt like I was flying. So, thank you very much for watching. Steve Zilla out.